Welcome everybody. As a continuation of the lecture about anaphylaxis, we have to talk about less severe forms of allergic reactions that come into the emergency department. Most commonly, urticaria and angioedema. So what is urticaria? Urticaria is swelling of the superficial parts of the skin. So there will be redness, there will be itching. While angioedema, angioedema is swelling of deeper tissues of the skin in the sub, sub, uh, deep subdermal and, and subcutaneous and submucosal tissues. So what will happen, there will be swelling around the eyes or around the mouth of the patient. Mostly the mouth will be involved. If you, if you come across a patient with angioedema, you, you can classify them broadly into allergic and non-allergic one. The allergic one is, uh, is usually due to histamine release. Um, so the patient will usually having uh, swelling, redness of the skin as well. There will be itching, there will be exposure to um, a content like a, a, a drug or something like that. They will get uh, this problem. But usually, if you say angioedema alone, allergic one, if, if there is no involvement of the breathing or circulatory or airway problem, this is just an angioedema and it is allergic type, that the treatment would be antihistamines. The second broader classification is non-allergic one. Non-allergic one could be due to drugs, especially IC inhibitors. IC inhibitors uh, can be, the patient can be on IC inhibitor for a long time, for months or years before they get um, this this problem it is mediated by bradycanin second type hereditary hereditary there is a mutation of a gene that lead to uh, decrease in the level of c1 stress inhibitor c1 stress in, uh, inhibitor deficiency so this is also bradycanin mediated uh, third type acquired so the patient may have a chronic illness, example SLE, so there will be autoantibodies produced against C1 stress inhibitor. Again, this is bradycanin mediated. We have idiopathic, the cause is not known and the mechanism is not known. We have some pseudo-allergy, uh, pseudo-allergenic, especially non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. The drugs commonly associated with angioedema are IC inhibitor vaccines, COX-2 inhibitors like meloxicam or etrococcib, angiotensin antagonist, example, uh, candisartan, valsartan, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, statins, proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole, pantoprazole, ismoprazole. So what is the difference if someone asking you what's the difference between allergic angioedema non-allergic angioedema and anaphylaxis, how to recognize them? You all know that anaphylaxis, there should be systemic involvement. Example, airway problem, um, circulatory problem, for example, the patient is in shock state or hypoxic, dyspnea. Um, there is wheezes in the chest. So this is anaphylaxis. It is rapidly, rapid onset progressive and there might be respiratory cardiovascular collapse. So this patient, you have to give them adrenaline as soon as possible. And other management, we talk it about like lying down and also um, uh, sometimes IV infusion of adrenaline. Allergic angioedema, uh, there, there is anatomically localized attack. And only the skin involved it on, uh, or only subcutaneous tissue involved it. There might be articaria, there might be also pruritus. But usually the patient have normal blood pressure. So what to do? Mild one, um, mild one, just supportive. If it is um, moderate, you may give antihistamine and also uh, steroids. Non-allergic angioedema. It is anatomically localized attack. There is no articaria. There is no articaria. There is no itching. But usually it is gradual onset. There is no pruritus. There is previous identical episodes. Usually the patient have a family history, uh, example, their father or their mother have the same attack. 
There might be abdominal pain. Again, hemodynamically, the patient is stable. The blood pressure is okay. So for this one, you have to think about uh, either drug-induced, example, AC inhibitor, or you think about uh, a, a familial one or chronic illness sometime. So for the treatment, in, if, if you have an allergic angioedema for moderate type, for moderate to severe attack, if there is a severe attack, you may give an IM adrenaline. This is only in severe cases, sometimes in moderate cases. This is for an allergic angioedema because you may be afraid of developing anaphylaxis. You may give a histamine 1 receptor blocker like chlor, uh, chlorpheniramine, alarmine, H2 receptor, uh, H2 receptor blocker like Samitidine, ranitidine, which are also used for GI tract uh, ulcers. Systemic corticosteroid, hydrocortisone or prednisolone. In our hospital, in our hospitals, usually we, we write, we, if, a, if a patient like that coming to our hospital, we give an alarmine ampoule and we give a, a hydrocortisone ampoule, 200 milligram. Topical steroids are of no benefit, no need to give topical one. You, you also discharge the patient on uh, an antihistamine. Hereditary or drug-induced uh, acquired angioedema, it's usually supportive if available. Ecatibant, bradycanin to antagonist, which is usually not available. Um, C1 is trace inhibitor concentrate, which is not available. The one which is uh, replacing them is fresh frozen plas plasma, which contains these uh, factors. So you give a fresh frozen plasma for cases suspected to be hereditary or drug-induced angioedema. For idiopathic, uh, it is usually supported. One of the features of hereditary, of hereditary angioedema is that it, it is not responsive to antihistamine and also not responsive to steroid. So if you give these drugs, there will be no response. Even adrenaline is not effective. Coming to urticaria, as we said, urticaria is swelling of the superficial tissues. There will be itching, there will be uh, swelling. So if, if the trigger is known, avoid it. This is most important. For mild symptoms, known trigger, you just tell them to avoid the trigger. For moderate symptoms, you just no need to classify them. But usually for mild to moderate, you have to give an antihistamine. Which type of antihistamine you have to give? Uh, the antihistamine, which is non-sedating. Non-sedating, I mean, does not cause sleep to the patient. The non-sedating antihistamines, example, loratadine, loratadine, citrizine, fixofenadine. You can search for the doses, but uh, adrena, loratadine, 10 milligram, one by one, citrizine, 5 to 10 milligram, one by one, Fixofenadine 120, 180, I think 90 milligram is also available one by one. If severe symptoms, the patient is very irritable, you can give oral steroids. Example, prednisolone. The prednisolone, the dose is 60 milligram, uh, or uh, sorry, 40 milligram. You give it for seven days. Uh, be careful that uh, sometimes prednisolone is not available, then you can give hydrocortisone 100 to 200 milligram instead. If the patient is breastfeeding, you can give loratadine or citrizine. These are safe for breastfeeding patients. If the patient is pregnant, try to avoid if it's mild, but for moderate to severe one, yeah, then you can give loratadine. Uh, so, as we said, most common drugs that causing urticaria might be muscle relaxant, um, antibiotics, painkillers, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Uh, the high-risk foods are, we talked about peanuts, uh, banana, kiwi, and, uh, and also sometimes eggs. So, you have to understand that Articaria and angioedema are milder forms of allergic reaction. They just need antihistamine and steroid if moderate to severe. But anaphylaxis is a severe type. For angioedema, if it is associated with 
um, with allergic reaction, you can give antihistamine steroid, but if not, it might be drug induced, it might be might be hereditary or might be due to chronic illness. Sometimes it is unknown because for hereditary one and or drug induced, you can give fresh frozen plasma. Thank you so much.